Hi, I'm Gary. Today I'm making the Airfix Sherman Firefly. Hi, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Indeed, today I am making this Sherman Firefly model tank from Airfix. Now, this is one of their new starter sets, a newly designed starter set. So it's really, actually, very, very good. It goes together very well. There's 31 pieces and it makes a model about 11 centimetres long. All you need is right in here, apart from a few other extras. For pretty much every build, I use side snips to take parts off the frames, a craft knife to help clean them up, tweezers for handling the smaller parts, sanding sticks, I make my own, but you can use things like emery boards, nail files as well, some clamps, or again, you can use just regular clothes pegs if you want, and some masking tape. And if you're using regular masking tape, make sure it's a low tack variety for delicate surfaces. If you enjoy the show, and I hope you do, please remember, thumbs up on the button down there, and subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell, and then you'll get notification of every new video as it turns up. Enough of all that, let's crack on and make this really nice Sherman Firefly. This new starter set is a limited rebox of a kit launched in 2020. It only comes with the pre-built tracks, but it includes paints, paintbrush, and a glue. On the front is some typically dramatic artwork, and on the rear is the layout of the colour scheme. Think kind of all over olive drab, but there are a few other bits and pieces, plus the locations of the decals. As a starter set, the kit is rated at skill level 1, so suitable for pretty much anyone, and it comes with one flying hour token. Now, you can collect these towards a free kit if you're an Airfix Club member, or you can donate them to Models for Heroes. Details of this excellent charity are in the information box below. Let's get on and see what's in the box. The first thing is this helpful tip sheet from Airfix, all sorts of ideas for making kit building that little bit easier. Of course, what I'm going to suggest is that you should look at my 10 top tips video as well for some ideas. The kit itself comes on just two sprues, as we call them, of green plastic. These seem reasonably well moulded, if a little chunkier than usual. There's also a plastic bag which contains three acrylic water-based paints, that's the olive drab, some black and gunmetal grey. There's also a number two paintbrush and some polystyrene cement. There is a tiny decal sheet with markings for a tank of the Polish 1st Armoured Division. And then there are the instructions. These are well printed and very easy to follow step by step. They even tell you exactly where to apply glue. Enough of all that, let's get on with actually making the kit. Cut the pieces from the sprues with a pair of side cutters like these, or a sharp craft knife where possible. As I've mentioned, these sprues seem a little chunkier than usual, so you will need to make sure you sand off any excess pieces. I use sanding sticks that I make at home, but you can buy them, or even use something like a nail file. Having this tube of glue makes it pretty easy to be heavy handed, so try to apply a small bead of glue first and then thin it out by dragging it along the edge of the pieces that you're joining. Here it's the side and the base of the hull. As this is a starter set, the alignment marks are big and easy to use. Once you've glued the two side panels in place, you can add the front and rear panels, which completes the centre section of the hull. Next are a couple of supports for the drive sprockets, one on either side of the front end of the hull, then this cover over the exhaust area at the back. When those have dried, we're going to do some painting, so make sure your paints are mixed well. Using a toothpick or a cocktail stick does the job. The first thing I'm painting here are the tracks before they get glued to the hull. These are moulded in one piece with the suspension and drive wheels and they get painted in the gun metal colour. Just take your time and don't use too much paint at once. While that dries you can clean your brush in water, 
Then start on the olive drab for the hull. Again, just keep brushing it to make sure it sticks well and don't put too much on at once. The paint I got in my kit was quite thick so you may not need more than one coat. Just see how you get on. With the tracks dry you can paint in olive drab on all the wheels and suspension parts. And once those have dried you can paint black in for the rubber wheels in the suspension and the return rollers at the top. Now a top tip for making this kit look better just using what you get supplied. With all the paint dry use a very dilute mix of the black as a wash and this will help bring out some of the details of the structure. If it does look a bit too thick quickly add water on the brush and then use that to thin it out. Let the paint dry and see if you've got the effect you want. You can always add a little bit more later. It's a good time to practice this skill as we'll use this technique again later on. The wash can be used around doors and grills to bring out the detail at the back end of the tank as well. With all that done and dried I can glue the tracks to the sides of the hull. Now there are shaped pegs here so things can only go on one way round. Onto the top shell and I'm gluing a rear plate onto the back. Then there are some holes through which you poke bits that end up as the towing loops. There are four of these, one in each corner. There are also two lamp assemblies that go through from the underside at the front of the tank. Next we're attaching a spare part to the top. Now I don't know what it is but I'm sure someone will help me out who knows more about tanks than I do. Anyway the point here is to use something small like a pin or a bent paper clip to put the glue on as the tube will just let loads out at once. A few little dabs of glue then just sit the part in place and adjust with some tweezers or something else really small. Likewise there are two filter type things that sit either side at the back, again someone will help out with the anatomy, but use the paper clip to dab just a little glue into these slots first. Now the next thing I'm doing is wrong, but it's in the kit and in the instructions so I've done it anyway. This is fitting the bow machine gun, well this was actually removed in the Firefly to make room for extra 17 pounder shells. Bit of a gaff from Airfix to supply it and to tell you to put it on, but there isn't a blanking plate supplied, so what to do? It's up to you, I guess you could sand it flat if you like, or just leave the gun off. Anyway, on that note of controversy, we'll attach the top cover to the hull, and our Sherman is really taking shape. Give it a good press together all round. With that setting we can move on to the turret. The front of the gun mounting goes in first, make sure it's the right way up and do let it dry well. Then a few dabs of glue, followed by the gun barrel and then the rear of the gun mounting can go in. Using dabs of glue means you can elevate the barrel up and down later if you want. Then the bottom ring of the turret is attached and snaps into place. It is a tight fit. Next is the mantlet. This is glued to the barrel, so if you elevate the barrel, the mantlet moves with it, just like in real life. Add dabs of glue to the underside of the barrel, that way they won't be seen. Next is the main crew hatch which sits on top of the turret. Then a really fiddly little thing which is some kind of air in this I think. Anyway, that completes the turret assembly. The last thing to do is add the missing half of the brake at the front end of the barrel. Click the turret into its position on the hull and the construction part is now complete. 
So next we go back to painting, covering up any unpainted skin with the olive drab. Now as before, take your time, don't add too much at once, and brush the paint over gently to cover and get rid of the brush marks. Next we're going to pick out some of the detail with the gunmetal paint, like that mystery spare part which might be something to do with the tracks, and the tools that are moulded onto the top of the cover. With all the paint well dry, we can start applying the decals or transfers. Cut the decal you need from the sheet and soak in water. In the meantime, just brush a little water where the decal is to go, as this will help you place it. I use a pair of tweezers to hold the backing paper of the decal, and the clean paintbrush to gently push it into place. With all the decals in place, it's looking pretty fine. But let them dry on well, as we've got one last trick to use. Now, you remember that thin black wash we used on the suspension? Well, now we're going to use it all over the rest of the tank. Where there are edges, such as the tools or panels, the paint collects and it emphasises the line. Don't go too thick too quick. You can always add, but it's tricky to remove. A gentle wash over the whole thing also makes the tank look well used. If you do have access to them, you can add little accents of colour like wooden handles for the tools or little bits of rust. But even if not, I think this is a lovely kit, if inaccurate, with the hull gun. It goes together well and it can look really convincing with very little effort. So it's a great starter kit for anyone. If you've enjoyed watching, please remember, thumbs up on the button down there. And of course, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell and you'll be notified of all the new videos as they turn up on the channel. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. <laughs>